In this video, we're going to talk about how to write uh, an experiment in biology, um, the kind of the different parts of, of how you would write up an experiment and why you would do this, and, and really kind of look at how, how you should do this um, in order to make sure that you include all the necessary information um, to convey to your readers what it is that you did, uh, how you, you performed your experiment, the data that you found, and then what results you basically uh, were able to, to discover from your experiment. Um, so the first thing that you need to be able to do when, when writing an experiment is to, one, ask a question. Science is all about asking questions uh, to try to explain what's happening around us and, and why things happen uh, out in nature, um, within specific organisms, between different organisms. That is really what science is based off of. Um, whatever branch of science you're looking at, um, in biology generally we're looking at living things particularly. Um, and so you need to be able to form a question of asking why something happens or how something happens. And based off of that or from that, uh, the next step then is to produce a hypothesis. And hopefully you've heard of a hypothesis before. Um, you maybe have heard it called an educated guess or a prediction. Um, but with a hypothesis, you're trying to make a, a guess or a prediction of what you think is happening and why or, or how much it's, uh, by, by what degree something is happening. And so the format for writing a hypothesis that we're going to use in biology, uh, I'm going to give you kind of a template here that will help you to do this. And this is how I'd always like you to form your hypothesis. If a change occurs in an independent variable, then the predicted change is going to occur in the dependent variable. The, the independent variable and dependent variable here and here is what you're going to sub in. So depending on your question and your experiment, your hypothesis, you're going to be putting in your independent variable and your dependent variable. Um, maybe I want to see what effects um, uh, different types of um, uh, maybe different amounts of miracle grow are going to have on uh, what effect they're going to have these different amounts on uh, plants growth. And so my independent variable then is the thing that I change, which in this case is going to be the amount of miracle grow that I provide the plants. And then the dependent variable then is going to be what changes as a result. And so in this case, I would expect that the plants receiving different amounts of miracle grow, uh, some are probably going to grow more than others. And so that's why I'm performing this experiment to try to figure out how, how much the different amounts of miracle grow affect that. So I'd like you to always use this format here, and you're just going to, depending on the experiment and the hypothesis, sub in the different independent variable and dependent variable. Um, if, and, and here's kind of another way to look at this, if change in the thing or the factor of the independent variable, then the prediction of how the dependent variable, what you're going to measure, will change. Um, so that's another way to look at it. When you're writing hypotheses, and I will always see these, and, and it happens all the time, uh, but do not include pronouns. I, you, we, he, she, it, y'all, they. Don't include pronouns in your hypothesis. Structure your hypothesis in this format so that you don't include a pronoun. Never want to include pronouns in your hypothesis. Um, and here is a, uh, uh, basically the same information that I wrote up on the whiteboard and, and included a picture of. Um, so we're going to get a little practice uh, writing a hypothesis. I've got two different examples here. And I want you to take a look at this hypothesis. And I want you to see if you can figure out what is wrong with it. And then I'd like you to fix it. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'd like you to pause the video here um, and, and take a look at this and see if you can figure out what's wrong with it and fix it so that it would be correct. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to take a look at this and try to figure out what was wrong with it and fix it. Um, how this should be fixed. Uh, the first thing is we've got a we here, and so we want to get rid of that pronoun. So I've, I've crossed that out. Um, and this is not very specific, change the water temperature. It's not very specific. It doesn't really indicate whether it's being increased or decreased. And so I've changed that here. You can see that in the red. If the water, ter water temperature is increased, and you could even go and be more specific and say by how much it's increased, uh, which, which would be even better, um, then the daphnia, uh, daphnia are small. Um, you can see them with the naked eye, but it's much easier to, to see them under a microscope. Uh, they're kind of small little water bugs. Um, so we've changed this to say that the uh, Daphnia's heart rate, uh, which you can actually see, their little hearts beating under a microscope, will also increase 
because the heart rate will beat faster due to increased environmental temperature. So you can see I've added a lot of more description here. With our hypotheses, we want to be very specific and very detailed in our predictions. You want to make sure that you're making a very predictable, uh, not a predictable, but a very specific guess or prediction of what you think is going to happen. Here's our sep uh, second example, and this is one that we'll do in class for sure. If bacteria is collected from different locations at Tualatin High School, bacteria will grow. Take a look at this one. Pause the video, see if you can figure out and fix uh, how this should be improved. Keep it in mind, no pronouns, uh, very specific and measurable predictions for your independent and dependent variables. So hopefully you had a chance to look at this one as well. And what I've got different on this one, uh, there were no pronouns in this one, so that's great. If bacteria is collected from different locations, and in this example I've actually listed them out, uh, making sure to be very specific. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the boys' bathroom, a drinking fountain, and a commons table at Tualatin High School. Then, always want to have an if-then statement, then bacteria will grow the most at or in the boys' bathroom. And so this is a more specific uh, prediction of what we think is going to happen uh, and where we think the most bacteria will grow. This is something that we can actually measure by looking at and, and analyzing and seeing how much growth has actually occurred. So that's the first part of an experiment. The next part is, is um, the background, or it's kind of like the introduction to the experiment. And in most cases, we will write a background. It's kind of like if you were to think of an English paper, it's kind of like the introduction to your experiment. And some things that you would want to include in the background, um, really the first thing is what is the topic that's being addressed? What are you looking at in your experiment? What, what are you addressing? What are you, uh, you going to be analyzing and talking about? Um, you'd also want to include what information would be helpful to the reader. For example, what would be necessary to understand the topic at hand? If you were talking about uh, photosynthesis, for example, or respiration, you would want to include some background information on those specific process and what they do and why they're important. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that you want this to be directed at whoever you think is going to be reading. So obviously, a experiment and a background that we write in our class is going to be uh, very different than one that a uh, PhD student would be writing for their class. Um, so that, that's important to keep in mind as well. Um, you'd also want to include what we already know about the topic, and this is a great location that you can use outside sources as long as they're uh, um, cited. Uh, include outside sources of, of where you got that information. Um, kind of a quick general explanation of what will be conducted in the experiment and why. And then any previously conducted studies or experiments that are related to your lab, some also outside information, things that we already kind of know about the topic that, you, that would be pertinent or important to include in your explanation. The procedure is, is pretty straightforward. It's really just a numbered, has to be numbered, step-by-step -step list of instructions. And so the idea behind the procedure is that anybody could come along and read your procedure and do the exact same experiment uh, that you've done. If after you've written your procedure and you go back and look at it, and there are some holes, or, or if, if somebody won't be able to, couldn't come along and, and do exactly what you did just by reading your procedure, then it's not detailed enough. Generally, you don't need to explain very common steps, such as finding the temperature using a thermometer. That's something that you don't need to include. But it has to be very detailed so that anybody who comes along and reads that procedure could follow it exactly uh, and perform the experiment exactly as you've done. Once you've got your procedure and your background and your hypothesis, you're actually going to conduct the experiment and collect some data. And the first thing that you want to do is to collect that data and put it, uh, that raw data, meaning that it hasn't been manipulated, you haven't done any calculations on it, you want to put that in a data table. And your data tables need to be titled uh, as to what they are. Um, generally, you want to title them data, data table one, and then a, a brief explanation of what it is. Um, and you want to include units with that. And you want to have a data table for both the qualitative and the quantitative data. Uh, qualitative being words and descriptions, quantitative being actual numbers. Data tables must have units, be titled and organized so that the information is really easy to read. Um, sometimes, once you've done your calculations, you can include those in the first or original data table, or sometimes it's easier to make a second data table. It's kind of up to you and how you want to organize and present your information. Um, but you're going to need to do calculations probably for your data. So maybe calculating the mean or the average, the median, the mode, standard deviation in some cases, uh, if you see a change, this little spelling error, um, if you see a change in the, the data and the information, or if you want to calculate a, a percent change, something like that, well, you need to perform those calculations. Uh, processing the data is, is kind of what I just talked about, using the raw data to present um, 
to, to, to do some calculations and then to present that information, those calculations by graphs or charts. Both graphs and charts also must be titled correctly. The title should indicate what the graph or chart is showing. And an easy way to do that is to really just say the effect of independent variable on your dependent variable. Um, it's kind of just taking bits and pieces of the hypothesis and using that to title your, your graph. Um, the effect of temperature on rate of diffusion, for example. Your axes of your graphs need to be labeled and include units, and a key or a legend must be included uh, if there's multiple variables on the same graph. The conclusion is kind of the last part of writing an experiment. And this is, this is the part where you are explaining what results you got uh, in a written form and then um, kind of making some explanations of why you think that happened. And the first part of an experiment, uh, what you always need to do is to restate the question and hypothesis. You've got to restate that. So, that's, so since you've already written those out, that should be very easy to do, just restating those or rewriting those. The second thing that you want to do is actually answer that hypothesis. And when you're answering the hypothesis, you must, must, must always use data to justify your answer. Um, so depending on whatever your hypothesis, hypothesis is, it's okay if it's wrong or if it's correct. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's okay. That's why you did the experiment. But you want to say whether it was correct or incorrect based off of the data that you gathered in your experiment, using the data in your experiment to answer that question. You really just think of this as just answering a question and you're using information that you gathered, that data that you gathered, to answer that question. Once you've done those two things, you want to explain and clarify the results. Why do you think you got the results that you did? Try to make some explanations based off of that. Um, the second thing, that, uh, third thing you want to do is indicate whether there was any human, like if I messed up during the experiment, I would want to describe any uh, mistakes that I made. Or maybe, and more likely, and what I'd like you to focus on uh, more on, is if there was any procedural errors. If your procedure had some, uh, some parts that were confusing, or their, uh, the procedure resulted in some mistakes, or some things that didn't allow the experiment to be conducted accurately and fairly, then, I'd, then you would need to discuss those. And also, maybe suggest what effect those maybe had on the results. And, and then going on from that, try to describe how those could be fixed, uh, those procedural errors could be fixed. Um, the last part is kind of uh, suggesting how um, the information that you obtain could be used further in future experiments. So what maybe would you do next? Uh, what additional experiments could you perform based off the information that you found? Why is this information helpful? How is it uh, applicable to the real world and to your life? So those are the different parts of an experiment and kind of looking at how you would write this up. Um, we'll go over this more in class, but it's kind of a, a quick introduction as to how to, to form the different parts of uh, an experiment and write them up.